Good day to you. Welcome back to another session of Revival Not Survival. And today I want to speak to you about a subject that is very dear to my heart, very close to me. And that is the goodness of God. I'm just going to give you a short um, idea of what it's about. But if you need a title, it's Marked for Life. You have been marked for life by this good God, this good Father that we serve. And you might, I know that there's some of you who might think, but I've tried that before, I do have faith, I believe God is good, but look at my life. But what happens is, we don't get intentional about our inheritance or receiving what God has for us as women in the kingdom. And so we live our lives hoping that God will notice us, hoping that God will see our needs and he'll feel sorry for us and he'll, he'll answer our prayers. It doesn't work that way. God is good. He wants to meet your needs. He wants to answer your prayers. But he's given you some authority here on earth. And I want to say this to you, that when it comes to prophetic ministry, when it comes to hearing and receiving from God, when it comes to representing him as a prophetic minister or a person of influence in any sphere of life where you find yourself, you have to know that God is good. You have to know the character of God. You have to, because you represent Him. And if you don't have an understanding of how He is to you, how He wants to reveal His goodness to you, through you, in you, for you, with you, then you're not going to be able to represent Him correctly, which is why I want to tell you this, that you are marked for life. So I'm going to read a scripture to you. It is Ephesians. It's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, but it's from the message version, one of my favorite scriptures. And it says this, long before, remember I said some people live their lives hoping that God will notice them. Here's the answer for you. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living. Before you even turned to him, God was looking at you. He was watching you living your life and waiting for the day that you would turn to him because he already had plans for you for glorious living. And you may look at your life today and say, but I'm not experiencing glorious living. Glorious living is the manifest nature or character and goodness of God in your life. And I'm telling you, if you just look closely enough, you'll see there's plenty of evidence of the goodness of God in your life. The fact that you're still here today is evidence of the goodness of God in your life. But God wants to reveal so much more to you. And then a lot of people think, but I don't deserve this goodness. So what they do is they operate in a gift that God has given them. And they're ministering to other people. But on the inside, there's a deficit in their own belief about who they are, their value system in the eyes of God. They're in deficit. And, and I want to help you to, to just up the level of that today. Here's another scripture for you. Um, Ephesians 1 verse 5. Um, I've just got to get it in my Bible. These are all foundational scriptures about our character, about who we are um, in God's eyes. And it's so important that we believe these things. Ephesians 1 verse 5. Um, I'll read from verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by, Je by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. You are accepted today. You are God accepts you in the beloved. And you need to know that your acceptance does not come from the approval of other people. Um, it doesn't come because of what you can do. Just settle the idea, settle the fact, settle with the revelation that today you are accepted in the beloved. Okay, here's another scripture for you. Um, you, you know, you've got to be intentional about your, your inheritance. You can't just be living this life hoping that the provision is going to come, that the healing is going to come, that your ministry is going to manifest. We have to be intentional about these things that, that God has given us. 
and so instead of saying but i've tried that before um you know uh, and it only works for for them it only works for kathy because she's in ministry no i lived with that thinking for so long in my life that I would see these people in ministry and I would think it's never going to work for me. It's it's only for them because they seem to be they seem to have this hotline to heaven, you know. They seem to have just something about them that they're more favored than I am. I'm going to read you some scriptures about favor now. But the reason that we don't resist this way of thinking is because of a lack of knowledge and a lack of as I said a deficit in our own belief system, in our value. And um, we live this way and we don't resist this way of thinking. We actually tolerate it. And this is something that we need to stop doing. If we're going to step into revival and get out of survival mode, um, we need to stop tolerating these things that the enemy lies to us about, about our value before God. So here's another one. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Um, and... The reason I've got my Bible here today is to show you I do read my Bible, but it's so important um, that we that we get into the scriptures and we find out all of these things. 2 Corinthians, I read from verse 20, it says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You don't try and be righteous. You don't um, perform to become righteous. We are made righteous by Christ, in Christ. In, and righteousness, as you know, is in right standing with God. And so if you live understanding that God had designs on you for glorious living, he still has. He, he looks at you and he says, I have a plan for that person. I want to make this thing come to pass in their life. I've got great things for them. And then he, he, he sees you as righteous in Christ. You're in right standing with God. And you are accepted. That acceptance thing is a huge thing. Because the devil, especially with prophetic people, the devil uses rejection. And we begin to think, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Um... I, I'm not hearing from God because what I have to say doesn't measure up to what that person has to say. They seem to sound more anointed and more spiritual than me. And if you know that whether you do something or not, whether you um, are running around saving the world or not, you are accepted in the beloved. You've got to know that. You've got to live out of that place so that you can be intentional about your purpose and your inheritance. So... James chapter 4, you know, I said to you, um, we are marked for life, that there's, God gave us a choice. Uh, back in the book of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30, God says, I set before you today life or death. And then he says, choose life. It was, it was like God said, these are the options that in front of you. Um, I'll read you the scripture. These are the options in life, life or death. And he was saying, please choose life I, I want you to choose life because when you choose life then all of these blessings now this is old testament all of these blessings all of these things that i have for you are, are yours but if you choose death you get nothing now in christ when we choose christ we choose life but what happens with a lot of us is we choose christ we choose life but then we step into our life in the kingdom and we live the way we did before where we feel we put, we have to perform which is why I started out with those scriptures about being accepted, being the righteousness of God in Christ, being um, God has plans for glorious living. I want to tell you that if you do not choose life, um, if you don't, if you, if you choose Jesus and you stop there, you're still going to get to heaven, but you're going to miss out on the greatest blessings and walking in the inheritance that God has for you as a prophetic woman of God in the season now. You need to make sure you cross the line and say, okay, I've chosen life and now I expect to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. A lot of it is around our expectation and resisting what the enemy puts on us because if you don't resist, you know, James, we're uh, in the book of James, it's chapter, James chapter 4 verse 7, it says, submit to God, 
resist the devil and he will flee. All we have to do is resist. But we forget to submit to God. And you know what it means to submit to God? To say, okay, God, this is my inheritance. This is what, these are your promises for me and they're all good. I'm going to submit to your ways. I'm going to choose life. And then once you choose life, your eyes get opened up to all the lies that the enemy has caused you to live under for years and years. And you've just sat back without knowing it and you've, you've accepted the lie that you have no value, that your life is never going to change. And today I want to say to you that as you begin to submit to God's ways and you get your thinking in line with what the scriptures say about you, you're going to find that life is good. I'm not going to say that miraculously your life is going to turn around. Maybe it will for you. But your life is just going to miraculously turn around. But you get the victory on the inside when you choose life. And everything starts in, on the inside. So uh, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 this says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That both you and your descendants may live. God was imploring them. Uh, saying please choose my ways. Because he wants good for his people. Do you know that? Might come as a shock to some of you when you look at your circumstances. He wants good for you. So and the reason I'm giving you all of this. Uh, you know uh, in the beginning sessions. Is I want you to be this fully persuaded. Prophetic anointed called, purposed, favored, graced woman of God is going to stand her ground when the enemy comes knocking and you're going to say, I refuse to believe that lie. I have value. I am a person of significance because I'm in Christ and God has a purpose for me. So the thoughts about our challenge will determine our victory. If you just think everything that comes your way is God sending it your way to teach you something or you have no authority. You, you don't have enough faith. Um, you didn't do enough. You don't pray enough. If you just live under that, you're not choosing life. So, so today, make it your, be intentional and say, I'm going to choose life in every thought that I have, every emotion that comes my way. If it's not, if it doesn't lead me to joy or peace, it's not from God. Um, that's very important. I was standing, before I read you some other scriptures, I remember standing in the front row of a meeting where next to Rory, it was during the worship time, quite a few years ago in a church in Australia. And we were standing there worshiping and I heard God say to me, it's time my people celebrated their stretch marks. And so I stood there and I thought, um, do I have to get up in front of this church and say this now? Because as a woman, who wants to celebrate the fact that you have stretch marks? And I know there were men in the meeting and do they even have stretch marks? I don't know. Um, but you know, stretch marks come mostly uh, from pregnancy or from putting on a lot of weight and then you lose it radically and you're, you get stretch marks. I don't have to teach you. You woman, you know about stretch marks. Um, and you see the signs that there was once more weight than you have now and now you're left with stretch marks now who wants to look in the mirror every day and say oh wow i celebrate the fact that i have stretch marks so i wrestled with this whole thing with god i stood there with him and i said i can't get up and say this and then god said to me when a woman has given birth to a child the stretch marks are there to remind her of the labor pain she went through of all the the carrying the child and then the fact that she gave birth to life the stretch marks there will remind the woman of what she went through and if we bring it into the spiritual realm this is what God said to me every single time you face a challenge every single time you go on a journey with God and you get to the other side and you get you have a victory in something you've overcome something with God you have a story to tell you prayed something through and you got a breakthrough you heard the voice of God and for you that was a breakthrough um, so God did something amazing in your life every single time you stood your ground and you got a victory you were, do, you were getting a stretch mark in the spiritual realm and those stretch marks are there as testimonies to remind you 
of what God has done in your life. And so God was saying to me, it's time that my people began to celebrate those victories instead of looking at the stretch marks and feeling in the spiritual realm, feeling I feel so battered and bruised by the spiritual battle I've been going through. It just seems to be hardship after hardship. And then we forget the testimonies that we really have. And so maybe every time you open up the word, you know, it says the word is like looking at yourself in a mirror. Um, we need to look at our lives and celebrate the victories we have instead of looking at our lives and feeling that we scarred by the hardships. You celebrate the victories, you are not scarred by your hardships. They're like medals of honor that you have in the spiritual realm because you're still here today. Every single one of us has a victory because we are still here today. So celebrate your stretch marks. You know, it's a, it's a, a, a changing, a mind shift change mind shift change mindset change when we shift our mindset from always focusing on the hardships we've been through yes people go through hard things life happens but if we're always focusing on that instead of focusing on the fact that god has given us a victory god has given us the way to get breakthrough we are accepted we are righteous and we have power and anointing to stand in these times so it's a mind shift change. And I want to end by giving you a few scriptures. And the first one is Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus said to his disciples, this is how you pray. Now remember, I'm talking to you about marked for life. The enemy has you marked for fear and destruction. Um, but God has you marked for life. There's a big sign on you in the spiritual realm as God has his eyes on you. And he says, there's life for that one. There is purpose for that one. I have great things for that one. That's what I mean when I say mark for life. And so when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to stop and think, what does that really mean? Jesus was saying to them, you need to be praying that the way things are done in heaven are going to be done here on earth. If you think about it right now, in heaven there is no lack, there is no crying, there is no depression, there's no confusion, there's no chaos, people aren't protesting about their rights, there's peace, the kingdom is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Um, this is what we have, righteousness, peace and joy in the Spirit of God. And so when Jesus said pray that way, this is what we need to bring into our own lives. We need to be praying every day. What, whatever you see in the natural, when you pray that way, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come today into my situation. Then you're inviting God in and you're saying, God, let it be done your way. And God's ways are always good. God's ways are always positive. God's ways are always redemptive and rest restorative. And God's ways are always to give you a good outcome to get for, so he gets the glory. So never ever go to God and say, God, I see my situation. It's terrible. I know you've given me all these prophetic words and I know there's something more for me, but this is what I see. You don't have to tell God what you see. You know, sometimes I sit with God and I really pour out my heart because I don't know what to say to him. But then there has to come a time where we say, God, but you said... And God, your word says, and so Lord, I'm asking you, I thank you, Lord, that I have the authority and the privilege of coming to you and saying, your will be done today in my life as it is in heaven. And it's all good. The other one is, is the table in Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, on that table is everything according to the finished works of Christ. So on that table in the presence of your enemies is life and prosperity and a future and a hope and deliverance and healing and provision and the things that you need here today are all laid out there before you but it's not good enough if you just look at it and admire it it's like taking out the scripture about being accepted in the beloved we say wow that's great that's amazing it's so nice and we print it out and we put it up all over the place and we have it on our phones and we show our friends but we have to apply that belief system that revelation in our thinking and it needs to come out of our mouths and we need to walk in that i'm accepted not become arrogant because you're better than anybody else but it's actually from a place of humility because you know who you are 
in Christ. That's true humility, knowing who you are in Christ. In spite of you, um, it's amazing to me that God would choose me um, with all my weaknesses and the bad attitudes I get. I'm not perfect. Um, and the things I say and the things I have to repent of. And God still chose me. He accepted me in Christ. And that is freeing. So I can be who and how God made me to be because of Jesus. You know, don't ever try and change who and how God made you to be. You just get rid of the bad attitudes and the bad behavior patterns and all of that stuff. But God made you with a unique flavor. He marked you for life so you could spread life wherever you go. But if you try and be like somebody else, you lose your flavor. You know, don't try and model some other preacher that you saw. You can't. God made you just the way you are, so be the way you are. My other scripture is, I don't think I've got another scripture. Uh, oh, I do, I do. Um, it's Psalm, Psalm 5, verse 12. Another one of my favorite scriptures. I need my glasses again. Sorry that I'm putting my glasses on and off all the time, but I did tell you that it's not going to be a professional camera lights action kind of situation here. Um, Psalm, what did I say? Psalm 5. I'm so excited about the goodness of God because um, I know I've experienced the goodness of God, but the goodness of God was always available to me. Um, it was always there, but I, I only heard people talk about God's goodness and, and I compared what they were saying to what I was experiencing and only when I got the revelation that God wants to do that for me too that I began to walk in it now I don't you know I'm, as I said life just doesn't suddenly become perfect but now when when things come knocking at my door um, I've got the John 10 10 as the plumb line in my life where Jesus said it's a thief who comes to steal kill and destroy but I've come to give you life and life in abundance that's how I know God marked me for life um, so I could have his life in my life um, and so everything that doesn't measure up to what Jesus said there I know that's not God that's not God he's withholding uh, the money from me that I need to pay bills or to buy food and people think this they think I know if I did some of you maybe still do today if there's a lack then it's God withholding because he wants to teach you how to have faith it's a lot of rot I want to tell you that now God says in his word he wants to provide he's our provider and so um, it says here in Psalm 5 verse 12 for you, no, I'll read it 11. Let all those who rejoice, let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Your name, who is God to you? Who is he? His name represents his character. How can you be joyful in God if you don't know that he wants to be good to you today? For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. You're righteous. Remember I told you. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield, the favor of God in your life. You know, I said you marked for life. It's like you've got this big sign board. You, you're carrying it around everywhere. And God says, that's my one. There's life for that person. They've chosen me and now I'm pursuing them with my love. I'm pursuing them with my goodness. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 23. And um, the favor of God... His kindness, His grace, His, His, His empowerment to stand in this time surrounds us as a shield. You are encircled today by the favor of God. But unless you see that and you stop looking at the circumstances, you will not access the favor of God. So this is how I access the favor of God. This is what happens in my life. I get up in the morning or during the day, whenever I think about it, and I begin to thank God for the promises He's given me. I might not say every single one of them, you know, word by word, word for word, but I, I have some scriptures that I speak over my life to, to make sure that I'm speaking life over myself. And I'm telling you, when you do that, you begin to notice the favor. You begin to notice the goodness. You begin to appreciate the little things. You begin to live in the, in the moment 
and appreciate who God is to you instead of just waiting till you feel better. You're not going to feel better without accessing the goodness that is waiting there for you to access. So when it comes to ministering to other people, when you have this freedom in your life, and it's a daily walk, you never get there and suddenly, oh, I've got it all together. Every single person on the planet who's a believer who in ministry or not will tell you, this is a daily walk. Um, and so we live ahead of, of what we think could happen. You know, we don't live expecting a crisis to come and then what am I going to do? I call those people vitamin C Christians. And this is, I'll explain it to you. You know, just before winter, people normally start to take a whole lot of vitamin C and a whole lot of supplements to prevent the fact that they're going to get flu in winter. They go for their, vitamin, their flu injection, all that stuff. I don't, but anyway, I take vitamin C, but that's another story. But there are some people who wait until they get a cold and then they start taking the vitamin C. But in, instead of taking the preventative steps ahead of time, making it a lifestyle. So what you and I need to do is we make it a lifestyle to walk in the goodness of God. We make it a lifestyle to expect to see the favor of God, the breakthrough of God. Don't wait until a crisis comes and then you get all your scriptures out and you take them like supplements that you should have been walking in every day as a lifestyle. So what I do is I'm speaking the word over my life. I'm learning this on a daily basis. I'm speaking the word. I'm driving in my car and I'm thanking God. I'm praising God for who he is. I'm thanking him for delivering um, me, for restoring me, for bringing me into freedom. And you know, that's the most prophetic you can ever be, is to be speaking life over your own life. You're prophesying over your own life by, by making declarations, by confessing the scriptures. And it's not a works program. It needs to become a lifestyle. And that's how you get the life of God flowing through your life, ministering to your heart, changing your mindset. That's how prophetic ministry has to start. And then you begin to get your eyes off your own circumstances because you're so thankful that even though on the, in the natural things haven't changed, you have an expectation in your spirit that you're speaking it out. You're getting into agreement with heaven because you're saying, God, I thank you that today your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven in my life. And you have an understanding that God's will is good. There's no hesitation in your mind because Jesus said he came to give us abundant life. So whatever you need today, I pray for you that the word coming out of your mouth will be in line with God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven today. I pray that you experience the goodness of God today. I pray that you see the favor of God in action in your life today, that you get answers to prayers, that you receive breakthrough, and you have a fantastic day until I see you again.